Usually we leave milk or bread pieces for the wee buggers to thank them for all the farm work they do when the moon rises. We've all gone to bed by the time they come out. My da sleeps like a right baby now he does. No more complaining about his bad foot. I think it's getting better. He snores a wee. Ma works herself so tired, so hard, she can sleep right through his noise. We were confused at first when we would awaken and find the horse re-shooed and all the horse's stalls cleaned. Who would do such a helpful thing way out on our cold farm? There's nothing else for oh but a day's ride after all. Da made a joke that it were the little people I guess. <laughs> Then Nathan, the old farmhand, come over with a glittering wide eye in the early morning fog and said, Oh, you knows about them then, do ye? To which Da, Ma, my sister and I exchanged a slightly uncomfortable glance, the kind that only happens when a farmhand who is mostly quiet turns excited in the midst of a strange goings-on, such as extraordinary things as a farm suddenly cleaning itself up. Can you imagine something stranger? Well, we started listening as old man Nathan made some recommendations with his hiss of a whisper. First, you feel a glass of milk from your cow, Lila's utter, not from Carlotta. Do you hear? You want to be sharing your best milk with the wee brownies. He hissed with a pointed finger in the air for emphasis. Brownies, exclaimed Ma. Nathan, you mean to tell me that we've got the fae cleaning up after our horses? Why, that's a... But she was cut off by old Nathan, who seemed to take on a strange quivering in his lower lip. The kind of quivering when you can't think of the words to say when you see a black wolf coming up behind a loved one and all that happens is your face takes on a wave of frightened and frustrated looks as the black wolf gets closer. That look. Ah! He exclaimed and shh! He said, sounding so desperately reprehensive that it was rather loud and it seemed to have the opposite intention of hushing Ma, but still she stood there in brief shock. We all were somewhat. And he continued, Next, you be giving them three slices of the sourdough, and five slices of apples, and three slices of the green apples, you see? It didn't take Ma long to recapture the Inquisition, and she fired out another question. Why such details and numbers, Nathan? You sound like you've done this before exclaimed Ma. Hush now, said old Nathan harshly. Then he looked around and lowered his whisper, apologising to Ma for his tone. Begging your pardon, sorry, Miss O'Hare. I'm using special portions to measure how many of the wee folk there are. These calculations are what we use to learn the number of the fay on my own family's property when they started visiting us and helping with the tasks at hand. If you feed them, They'll keep working. So, out of respect, old man Nathan, who'd been working for us for a long while, we followed his strangely detailed instructions that evening, leaving the food along the hearth, and when we returned in the morning, well, would you believe it, the hearth was nearly empty. The three green apple pieces and one slice of bread were all that remained. That means they're males. The boys don't like green apples. Males, you say? asked Ma. So what's the significance of that? What does it matter if the wee folk are boys or girls? I suppose now we're, we're marrying them off to little Irene now. I think they're a little below her league, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and she gave out a laugh as bright as a cherry atop her little arsenal of sarcasm. Old Nathan, he frowned at this pun, which was a good pun. I think that's why he was so annoyed. I think nothing stings quite like a good pun volleyed by your opponent that hits its target. That's too bad for you, Mrs. O'Hare. The boys can't sew, or do the dishes, or tend to the laundry, he said with a bit of bite in his rebuttal. Sure, some of them might, but most of them don't know how. 
Ma thought a moment, refusing to be had. Humph! Well, with the extra time the kids have, not having to clean after the horses and the like, I can teach them some of my extra chores. There you are. Thank you, Nathan. Satisfied with herself, Ma bade Nathan explain the rest of the plan and took on more of a team spirit now that the organisation of her new employees was taking shape in her busy mind. The next night, he told us to leave the same portion sans the amount of leftovers previous. The thing about brownies, they stay to their portions. Sometimes you get a greedy lot, but these don't seem to be, he said, as he pointed to the single slice of bread that they had left. Little creatures of habit they be, or it's like they made a deal with you, said the old man affirmingly, and I'll stick to it, provided you keep up your end and you feed them. A deal, you say? Thank you very much, we did no such thing. Margaret, said Da. Listen to the man. Tain't no going back now. This is the fay we're dealing with now. Dealing? I never made any deals. Margaret, not another word. The man's talking sense now, and don't you be looking at me like that. Ma closed her stupefied mouth and looked at both men, and then, collecting herself, nodded for old Nathan to continue. He was a bit sheepish now. Right in the middle of it he was. He cleared his throat and did his best to explain the legend. Business as usual. And uh, looks like there be two of them, he said, observing the place. Now that we know how many, leave them a bit of honey and some butter. They love butter. <sighs> in that sense, they're just like us. So that's what we did. And though we don't see them, we see their handiwork. Do I believe it? Oh, yes, I believe it. I had plenty of reason later not to ever mess with the way things were turning out. Hey, and what was the reason, you ask? Well, you remember when I said Da's foot was giving him some trouble? Well, that's the crux of it. You see, he opted not to go for to the store one day and we were out of the brownies' food. Next morning, Ma awakens to the most terrible scream. She leaps up off her pillow, and there's Da, with a nail in his foot, his heel. He was stepping into his slippers, and the nail was standing in the heel of one of them, just waiting there. And hand on me heart, that bedroom door was bolted shut all night. Old man Nathan was blathering, It's the brownies! You've made them mad! You've broken the deal! He shrieked, Ah, but there wasn't any deal in the first place, cried Ma. Ah, uh, my foot woman! Yep, da. Get the food! Get the food! Echoed old Nathan. And make sure you get some pie this time too. The cherry pie! He called out to her as the wagon roared to life with her cracking the reins as she yelled out to the readied horse. Yah! Yah! The cherry pie, Mrs. O'Hare! He yelled once more, then half to himself, Make sure you get the cherry pie. And great snakes, if you didn't ever see Ma set her feet to the wagon to store faster than Da gulping down a pain numbing amount of bedside whiskey. <laughs> she returned just over an hour later, mumbling something about unfair deals with Fay and shopkeepers, and she came back with bread, cheese, apples, and much to old Nathan's relief, cherry pie. She left a slice of that cherry pie that night on the hearth, let me tell you. And things returned to normal. And things stayed normal. For the most part, everything's nice. It's not just bread and apples we leave them. Some nights it's cheese, nuts, and olives, if they can trade in town for them. If we leave an extra chore undone, why... We leave them a little extra food and drink. Sometimes on a special holiday, we leave them their favourite, which is some leftovers of our cherry pie. They take their fill, and we leave it the next two nights until they're finished. We can't complain, except there's that nag and worry none of us want to mention. We pray every night, and we pray we never run out of food. Eventually, 
The brownies took their fill of us and moved on. It was coming on seven years there when they did though. All at once the stables needed cleaning and the horses needed reshoeing. It was bittersweet. Now that we had our supposed freedom back, we missed the little buggers as we cleaned the horse apples and the like. Tut, I grew up and moved to the city of New York. I do quite enjoy it now, except... Except sometimes I come across a party or a date and there's a cherry pie. And I push the plate away as far from me as I can get it. Then I leave the establishment quick as I can.